SkyRapCoach.com, precision in stop and shop. It's a great technique for this go-to method of nucleus division. Well, I always have to think how we're going to split up the nucleus. Now, our guest surgeon here was on our podcast yesterday. That's Dr. Nitin Chopra from Colorado here in the USA. A fantastic podcast because he has such a different life path than most of us. He spent more than a decade as a Wall Street financier. So all the stuff we always thought, like, you know what, maybe if I didn't do ophthalmology, I would have been on Wall Street in a hedge fund or private equity, and I would have made like 10 times or 50 times the income, and maybe I'd be retired. Or all. But you know what? It was a great podcast because we learned the grass isn't always greener, and you've got to really find your passion, and we're so lucky that our passion is ophthalmology. Now, starting off here, it looks like a pretty routine kind of case. Nice red reflex there. Here comes the rexus. Let's take a look there. And nice technique there. And so it looks like a right-handed surgeon. We've got a nice little paracentesis about three clock hours away. That's going to be for the second instrument. Here comes a nice looking rexus. And completed. Now, the key in any nucleophragus technique really is to get a good hydrodissection. You've heard it here before. If it does not spin, you will not win. Now, here's a specialized, it looks like a chain cannula, getting a good fluid wave going across. And then I like to spin the nucleus a little bit, but let's see what's going to happen now. We've got the video at 2x normal speed, just so we can be efficient and watch it in a brief amount of time. Remember, I study my uh, video decay rates. I know if I show slow videos, you guys don't like to watch. Now, here comes the groove down the middle. Let's take a look here. So this is probably a low flow, low vacuum, and low infusion pressure, and a reasonable amount of phaco energy. For a nucleus like this, maybe like 30%. So nice groove going right down the middle here. Obviously, deeper in the center than, and thinner in the periphery. And now, look at that. Just a few passes, and already a nice chop or crack right down the half and making sure you fully propagate that nice rotation here by the way and now let's take a look what we're going to do next all right a little bit like a divide and conquer perhaps so you can definitely do a divide and conquer and uh, let's take that first piece out and then perhaps the second half of the nucleus will be uh, done with the chopping technique let's see here we go now for this part you certainly have to use higher vacuum and higher flow so you definitely want that vacuum level. I'd say here at least four or 500 millimeters of mercury for your max vacuum. Now here comes the second half of the nucleus, bringing that forwards and look at that, there's the chop. So it's kind of halfway between a divide and conquer and a stop and chop. And that chop was reasonable, try again. Nice, nicely done here. So again, stop and chop is a really nice technique. Certainly it's uh, one of the techniques you learn on your road to being just a chop surgeon. Eventually, I think most people I've talked to have learned all the techniques. Everyone started off at divide and conquer, then stop and chop, and then eventually they just go to straight chop. And a chop technique tends to be really the most efficient of all. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, I enjoy doing this surgery now, even decades later. Look, it's looking pretty clean. Now, let me tell you about Retina Rounds, our sister channel. So much great material. I promise you're going to love it. It's fantastic material, even for a general ophthalmologist like you. We just recently filmed a video where I was the patient on Retina Rounds of how to do a good scleral depressed exam to see the retinal periphery. So I volunteered my own eyes for you guys. So you can see, and yes, yes luckily, my retinal periphery is totally healthy, 360, both eyes. Now, back in this case, cortex removal going very efficiently here, stripping that there centrally, and that bag looks really nice and clean. So beautifully done here. And you can see there's the outline of that rexus. Rexus looks good. And then once this is cleaned up, this is like the one time I tend to get the eye out of primary is when you access that sub-incisional cortex. So we're using a coaxial instrumentation like this to access the sub-incisional cortex. You tend to have to move the eye a little bit out of primary. If you are doing a bimanual approach to the eye, you can certainly just keep the eye in primary the whole time and, and maybe even easier to access sub-incisional areas here. Now a little bit more cleanup. That looks great. Let's see what we're going to do for the lens. It looks like patient's obviously under topical anesthesia. Here comes a cohesive viscoelastic filled capsule bag. And this is looking pretty nice. I tend to pause the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim there. Although studies have shown one way or the other, probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Here comes the lens going inside here. Looks like a single piece of acrylic lens. Yeah, I just do a wound assist. Just right there. That's enough. Okay, you can put it in all the way. And now deliver, deliver, deliver. Here comes the lens. Looking good. Get that opened up. And let's see. Yeah, it looks like a monofocal, single piece hydrophobic acrylic. Perhaps that's the uh, Techno style lens. And now going underneath it, removing viscoelastic. And then we can finish up the case here. So beautiful technique here. Again, check out the Cattle Coach podcast. It was really fascinating. I truly enjoyed the discussion. Again, that podcast was just yesterday. Uh, that would be Sunday, August 17th is when we premiered it. Really a fantastic discussion. 
And it kind of helps you realize that the grass isn't always greener. And if you've ever thought like me, gosh, maybe I should have just worked in Wall Street and, you know, I'll already be retired right now. You know what? No, that's not the right path for me. The right path for me and for you, fortunately, is off the mall. And we get to do fun stuff like this beautiful cataract surgery. The end of the case here, get that lens beautifully centered. Look at those Purkinje images. Seal up the incisions, check them all with a wax cell, and call it a day. And remember, you can check out our sister channel, retinarounds.com. I promise you're going to love it. And of course, the Cataract Coach website is there, but also the Cataract Coach podcast. The secrets to being successful. That's what I'm going to teach you.